Economic development around the EV industry is booming, and Phil Lebeau joins us now with a special guest in the middle of all of it. Hello again, Phil. Joe, this is one of those interviews that you should pay attention to because I hear this question all the time. How many of these plants are coming to the U.S. in the southeast and the Midwest? Who's picking these sites? Let's bring in Dennis Cuneo of D.C. Strategic Advisors. Uh, Dennis, you are at the heart of a lot of the selection sites uh, that are being made. And when somebody says we're putting a battery plant or we're putting a final uh, assembly plant for an electric vehicle somewhere. Uh, how hot is the market right now? And am I correct? Your company has actually had to turn down some business simply because there are so many who are in the process of deciding to put a battery plant or a final assembly plant somewhere? Phil, uh, it, I've been in the auto industry 40 years, and I've never seen this kind of investment. In the past uh, two years, there have been over 20 multi-billion dollar projects announced, and uh, there's more coming, uh, especially with the enactment of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act it provides us some significant incentives, so I think we're going to continue to see more and more investment. So are we, I mean, and I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but when you and I have talked in the past, you said, look, it's, it's running so hot, we can't handle all the business. Is that accurate? That's accurate. That's accurate. And it, uh, I work with a company called Walbridge. It's a large construction company. And has had to, Walbridge has had to turn away some significant projects because they simply don't have the resources to handle they're as full as they can be. Explain for, uh, for people so they understand just how much money the IRA, the new package, covers in terms of manufacturing facilities so that a company, when they're building a new site, a lot of this is going to be covered uh, through the IRA bill, correct? That's correct. And let me give you an example. Uh, uh, kind of a typical size EV battery cell plant is 35 gigawatts. Uh, $3 billion investment. The IRA has a production tax credit that provides a $35 uh, per kilowatt hour for the battery cells, another $10 for the battery packs. So you put that together, uh, if that 35 gigawatt uh, plant is running at full capacity, in one year it will generate $1.5 billion in tax credits. So in two years, that project would have been paid for. If that plant only runs at 50% capacity, it would still be paid for in four years. So it's an incredible incentive. And, uh, and, 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 the, and the credits are transferable. Credits are transferable. Uh, you can, uh, even if you're not in a tax position, uh, uh, you can get direct pay. And, and you don't have all the requirements that you do for the consumer tax credit. Uh, one requirement is the battery cell and the packs must be made in America. But there's no income limits. Uh, uh, no limits on sure. the price of vehicles, et cetera. And the credit goes right to the manufacturer. Dennis, what's the hottest area right now? I spend a lot of time in South Carolina. I've probably been in South Carolina more than I've been in Michigan in the last couple of years, talking about EV plants being uh, developed there. Where's the hottest area right now? Well, the, the, probably the top five states are Michigan, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, Georgia, and here in Nevada. Uh, Tesla just announced a uh, uh, $3.5 billion expansion of their gigafactory here. They're going to add 100 uh, gigawatts of battery capacity. And uh, so those are the top five states. But, but the uh, investments being spread around, states like Arizona, Kansas, Texas, uh, South Carolina, um, North Carolina. So it's, it's, it's being spread across the country, uh, and uh, everybody seems to be getting a piece of it. Last question, Dennis. Uh, why, why can't we just retool old plants? We're going to get these new EPA rules likely announced on Wednesday. That's going to really force the automakers to build even more EVs, even faster. And I get this question all the time from people. Well, why can't they just take some of these you know, internal combustion engine plants and make them EV plants? Is it just not cost effective? Well, uh, on assembly plants, it's, it's relatively easy to convert. And I think most assembly plants that are building internal combustion engine uh, cars will be converted. But you, it's very difficult to convert, for example, a, a foundry that's building engine blocks or a factory that's building spark plugs. Uh, those just wouldn't work, and you're, you're going to have to do new plants. Battery cell plants are, are much different than, than other kinds of parts that we've built in the past for the auto industry. They're, they're uh, almost like a, 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 a semiconductor fab with clean rooms, et cetera. So it's going to take new investment. Dennis Cuneo, 
D.C. strategic advisors. Dennis, thank you for joining us. Guys, I've been talking to Dennis for 30 years, practically. And, and every time we have talked in the past, 25 years ago, it was about developing Toyota, uh, where the plants were going, whether it was down in San Antonio, elsewhere. Now, all about EVs. And he said it. It's a hot market right now, so hot that, you know, they're running out of prime locations. I hear you, uh, Phil. That is uh, that's interesting. How quickly, just in general, Phil, can everything be ramped up? I'm just hearing there's going to be shortages, no doubt, as, as we continue to, you know, with, with any yeah, of we, the... We won't, have the we won't have the batteries. We won't have the battery supply as quickly as everybody's expecting. Not until 25, 20, late 25, 26. It's just, it's just, you just can't build these plants that quickly. And the supply chain to get all of the key ingredients... Uh, to those battery uh, manufacturing yep. facilities. It's, I mean, they're moving, but it's, we're, we're in the bottleneck. Yeah. That Mercedes on the Masters commercials, uh, Phil, it's 100, was 125000 That's That's what that goes for. That's pretty, that's, you know, that's rarefied air, as you said. Uh, th yes, it so is.